Greetings everybody, welcome back to Weekly Wildlife Wisdom. Now so far I've been your host Zero Yeti and welcome to the Middle East special where I'm going to be talking about animals from the Middle East. Without further ado, let's get into it. The first animal link being the dromedary camel, also known as the Arabian camel or the one humped camel. It is a large even-toed ungulate in the genus Camelus, known for having one hump on its back. Dromedary camels were first domesticated in the Arabian Peninsula and Somalia some 4,000 years ago and remain to this day popular pack animals that are valued for their meat and milk. True wild dromedary camels haven't existed for roughly 2,000 years and all current wild dromedary populations are actually feral populations descended from domestic stock. Today, feral dromedaries can be found thriving in areas in arid regions throughout much of North Africa, the Middle East, India, Pakistan, Sicily, the Canary Islands, and Australia. Dromedary camels are diurnal and generally shy animals live in herds of around 20 that are led by a dominant male. These herds will occasionally link up with other herds to migrate in search of better food and water, forming congregations several hundred strong. Their diet consists mostly of foliage, dry grasses, and desert vegetation, uh, and with their thick lips, rubber-like necks, and strong stomachs, uh, this allows them to eat woody and thorny plants that most other animals can't. Dromedary camels are preyed upon by wolves, lions, tigers, dingoes, and hyenas, uh, reach around 7 to 11 feet, or 2.1 to 3.4 meters long, and around 5.5 to 6.5 feet, or 1.7 to 2 meters tall at the shoulder, and around 650 to 1,500 pounds in weight, or 300 to 680 kilograms. Dromedary camels are characterized by their long, curved neck, deep, narrow chest, and single hump. The hump is comprised of fat bound together by fibrous tissue, and this acts as a food storage in times of need. The size of the hump varies with the nutritional status of the camel, becoming smaller and leaning to one side during times of starvation. Dromedaries are typically caramel brown or sandy brown in color, however, coloration can range from black to almost nearly white. These camels have remarkable adaptations for a desert lifestyle, with their eyes being protected from blowing sand and dust by a double row of eyelashes. They have large pad-shaped feet ideal for walking on loose sand and the ability to close their nostrils to prevent sand from entering their respiratory system. Dromedary camels are poly polygamous a species which typically breeds from November to March. During this time, males attract females by extruding their soft palates and gurgling. After a 13-month pregnancy, mothers typically give birth to one or two calves, which remain with their mother for around two years. Under ideal conditions, a dromedary camel will reach sexual maturity around 3 to 5 years and may live up to 50. Next up, we have the Desert Horned Viper, Sarastus Sarastus, also known as the Sidewinding Horned Viper, the Saharan Horned Viper, the North African Horned Viper, the African Desert Horned Viper, the Greater Sarastus, or the Asp. It is a venomous species of viper native throughout the deserts, badlands, and shrublands of Morocco, Mauritania, Mali, Algeria, Tunisia, Niger, Libya, Chad, Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia, Somalia, Israel, Yemen, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Iraq, Syria, and Jordan. These typically solitary and nocturnal snakes move about their environment by sidewinding, during which they press their weight into the sand or soil, leaving whole body impressions. They are proficient burrowers and can often be found lying submerged in sand or loose dirt, with only the tops of their head visible as they sit and wait to ambush prey, such as lizards, birds, and small mammals. They are themselves preyed upon by monitor lizards and honey badgers. Like all vipers of its genus, the desert horned viper is venom is cytotoxic, affecting the walls and contents of the cells. It is known to cause swelling, nausea, hemorrhaging, vomiting, necrosis, and hematuria. Uh, however, while their bite can be incredibly painful, it is seldom fatal, especially if treated quickly and properly. Males average around 12 to 24 inches, or around 30 to 60 centimeters in length, while females can reach up to 33 inches or 85 centimeters in length. They are easily recognized by the presence of a pair of superocular horns, although hornless individuals can rarely occur. 
Uh, the color pattern of these snakes consists of a yellowish, pale gray, pinkish, reddish, or pale brown ground color, varying depending on their surroundings. Dorsally, a series of dark, semi-rectangular rectangular blotches run the lengths of their bodies. The belly is white and the tail is thin with a black tip. Mating occurs in the spring around April, and after mating, females will, give, will lay 8 to 23 eggs under rocks or in abandoned burrows. These hatch after 50 to 80 days, and under ideal conditions, the desert horned viper will reach sexual mature around 2 years of age, and they have up to 18. Next up, Pallas's cat, Octocolobus manul, also known as the manul, is a small wild cat native to Central Asia and can be found throughout the Caucasus, Iranian Plateau, Hindu Kush, parts of the Himalayas, Tibetan Plateau, Altai, Siam region, and South Siberian mountains. They are here. They inhabit montane grasslands, shrublands, rocky outcrops, and sheltered ravines. And they are crepuscular, solitary felines which use caves, rocky crevices, and marmot burrows for shelter. Palace's cat feeds primarily on rodents, shrews, pikas, hares, rabbits, passerine birds, as well as occasionally carrion beetles, lizards, grasshoppers, and freshwater fish. Palace's cats are themselves eaten by snow leopards, wolves, Asian leopards, and eagles. Uh, reach around 26 to 38 inches, or 67 to 96 centimeters in length, and around 5 to 10 pounds, or 2.5 to 4.5 kilograms in weight. Palace's cat is a small, stocky wild cat, which sports rounded ears that are set low on the sides of the head and a long, bushy tail. Its thick, shaggy coat changes color depending on the season, in winter being a frosted gray, in the spring, it is a fox red molted with gray. The pupils of its large eyes, unlike those of other small cats, contract into semicircles instead of slits. The breeding season lasts from September to December, and after a 66 to 75 day pregnancy, a mother palace cat will give birth two to six kittens, which will stay with their mother until around four to five months old. Under ideal conditions, the Paulus's cat will reach sexual mature around one year of age and may live upwards of 11 years. Next up is the Mongar, Lucudo barbus essosinus, also known as the tigress salmon, the Euphrates salmon, the pike barb, or the pike barbel, is a large species of ray finned fish in the genus Lucio barbus, native to the Tigris Euphrates river system in Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Turkey. Mangar prefer to dwell in deeper waters of large rivers, lakes, and reservoirs, and they sport a wide and varied diet consisting of plankton, insects, mollusks, crustaceans, worms, smaller fish, and even small birds, which they are known to catch in flight by jumping out of the water. Uh, reaching up to 7.5 feet or 2.3 meters in length and 310 pounds or 140 kilograms in weight, the mongar is the second largest species of cypronid on Earth, only being surpassed by the giant barb. It is a large head with a toothless mouth surrounded by four barbels. The silvery body is covered with small scales and there is only one dorsal fin. There is also a pair of pectoral fins and a pair of ventral fins. The anal fin and tail have yellowish tones. Breeding occurs throughout March and April during said time, sexually mature mongar travel to shallower rivers and streams in order to spawn. Here, females will deposit dozens of small straw-colored eggs in between rocks and boulders on the river bottom. Males reach sexual maturity around, earlier at around 5 to 8 years of age compared to females around 7 to 9. Under ideal conditions, a mongar may live upwards of 20 years. Next up is the Nubian ibex, Capra nubinia. It is a desert-dwelling goat species in the genus Capra, which is native to the mountainous regions of northern Africa and the Middle East, where it can be found throughout Egypt, Jordan, Oman, Israel, Palestine, Saudi Arabia, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Yemen, and Sudan. Nubian ibexes are social animals that tend to live in sex-segregated herds for much of the year, with females young and males of up to the age of around three years living in groups of 20 to 50 members. While adult males form herds of 8 to 10, which only merge with female herds during the breeding season, Nubian ibex primarily feed upon grasses, shrubs, and leaves of acacia trees. They are preyed upon by leopards, wolves, golden jackals, foxes, eagles, and bearded vultures. 
With new with females average around two feet or sixty five centimeters tall at the shoulder and fifty five to seventy five pounds in weight, and males at around two point six feet or seventy five centimeters tall at the shoulder and one hundred and ten to one hundred sixty five pounds in weight, the Nubian ibex is the smallest species of ibex on Earth. They are a light tan color with white underbelly, and males also have a dark brown mane down their backs. Uh, their legs have a black and white pattern, and they have a lighter rump with a dark brown tail. Males begin growing a beard at the age of two to three, uh, which tends to grow longer and darker as they age. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Nubian ibexes have long, thin horns that extend up and then backwards and down, reaching around one foot or 30 centimeters in length for females and 3.3 or 1 meter in length for males. Male horns are thicker and grow large boulders, which prevent the horns from sliding when the males are locked in combat. The mating season lasts throughout October and November, during which time male herds will join with female herds and males will compete for the rank of dominant male in order to breed with receptive females. After a five-month pregnancy, mothers will typically give birth to one to three kids. The mother and young rejoin with, their, uh, with other mothers and their offspring to form and raise their young communally in creches. Females reach sexual maturity around three to four years, while males reach around six. Under ideal conditions, the Nubian ibex can live up to 18 years. Next up is the Palestine sunburn. Uh, Cineris osea is a small pasturine bird in the sunbird family, Nectarinidae, which is native throughout Palestine, Israel, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, Egypt, Lebanon, Syria, Sudan, Uganda, the Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and Cameroon. It inhabits dry woodland, shrubland, verdant valleys, savannas, orchards, and gardens, where it feeds primarily upon insects, sap, and nectar, which it extracts using a long, brush-tipped tongue. There are they are a somewhat social species which communicates using high, fast, jingling songs and various calls, including harsh a harsh alarm call. Both sexes reach around three to five inches in length or eight to twelve centimeters in length, with a five and a half to six and a half inch or fourteen to seventeen centimeter wingspan. Uh, male Palestine sunburns are slightly heavier than females. Uh, in both sexes the bill is fairly long, black, and curves downward. The plumage of breeding males is mostly dark, but appears glossy blue or green in the light. There are orange tufts on the side of the breast, which are hard to see except at close range. Females and juveniles are gray-brown above the pale underparts, and non-breeding males are similar, but may retain some dark feathers. Breeding occurs from June to October, during which time both sexes work to build a purse-like nest, which hangs from a branch in a tree or bush out of Leaves, grasses, wood chips, mosses, spiderwebs, hair, wool, feathers, and other salvage materials. Uh, here the female lays one to three smooth, glossy eggs that are incubated for around 13 to 14 days. The young are downy with an orange-red mouth and fledge after 14 to 21 days. Under ideal conditions, the Palestine summer may live upwards of 16 years. And our extinct animal is Bacillosaurus, meaning king lizard. It is a genus of large, predatory, prehistoric Archaeocete whale, which lived throughout the late Eocene approximately 41 to 33 million years ago. First described in 1834 from vertebrae of partial jaw, teeth, sorry, a humerus and rib fragments by Richard Harlan. Uh, he originally thought they belonged to a giant quack reptile, hence the suffix saurus, which is the ancient Greek word for lizard. The mammal was later found to be a prehistoric whale, which prompted attempts at renaming the creature, which failed as the rules of zoological nomenclature dictate that the original name uh, be used when possible. In 1904, fossils were later found of a second species throughout Egypt, Morocco, Jordan, Tunisia, and Pakistan. Fossils have also been unearthed in the southeastern United States and Peru. Today, there are two valid species, B. cetoides and B. isis, with B. isis reaching around 50 to 60 feet or 15 to 18 meters long and 7 tons or 6.5 metric tons in weight, and B. cetoides uh, reaching around 56 to 66 or 17 to 20 meters in length and 6.5 tons or 5.8 metric tons in weight. 
Psilosaurus is one of the largest, if not the largest, animals of the Paleogene, and one of the largest animals known to exist between the KPG extinction event nearly 6, six million years ago and around 15 million years ago when modern whales began to reach enormous sizes. Although it likely lived around the globe, a cell source was particularly abundant in the Tethys Ocean, where it was the top predator of its environment, preying on sharks, large fish, sea turtles, crocodilians, and other aquatic mammals, such as the primitive Cyrenian protosiren, the earliest semi-aquatic elephant, Morotherium, and the dolphin-like Duradon, later of which seems to have been its preferred prey source. As always, take care to my guys, gals, and my binary pals. Have a wonderful day.